Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at whether it's 10 to 14 days for today's second video, day 10, gets to around the 2nd of February, and I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video we say was our 6 a.m. upload, and we've got Ensembles Watch as a video upload coming up for you uh, later on uh, this evening. Not going to be a uh, live stream, so uh, the live streams will be back hopefully on Friday and Sunday next week, but for this week, Ensembles Watch will just be like a regular upload. I hope that's okay uh, with everybody. Been a bit going on at Gaza of his towers uh, over the past few days, so uh, so no live stream uh, tonight, but it uh, should be back. Um, I'm gonna to say tomorrow, should be back uh, next week, and on Summer's Watch will be as a video uh, tonight. Uh, right, okay, so if you enjoyed videos on the channel, enjoy the content, then please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I hope you're having a nice Sunday. Right, we're going to start off with temperature at 10 HPA then from the JMA uh, over the uh, North Pole. Of course, 10 HPA over the Arctic and North Pole from uh, the JMA. So the trend line is uh, the trend of this time of year. The black line shows we've been aware of currently are with temperatures at 10 HPA. So, uh, of course, we're in a warming phase of the year now. Uh, of course, we should have reached our coldest point of the year in terms of temperatures at 10 HPA. They should be generally trending up now through uh, to the summer. Not a linear process. You will get some years at D-Day and, and whatnot. But the overall trend at this time of year should be now starting to warm things up gradually at 10 HPA. Uh, we have had uh, very cold temperatures, much of December and into January in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. We've been down there very close to minus 18 at uh, 10 HPA. We have seen a warm up in those stratospheric temperatures, though. So currently we're uh, residing here. So we're somewhere around minus 72, minus 73. We are still a little bit above, a little bit below average, I should say, uh, for uh, early January, uh, for late January. For late January, we should be around here. You know, uh, somewhere around minus 56, 57, something like that. So we're still colder than average. However, we have lifted the temperature up um, at uh, 10 HPA. So, uh, so yeah, like the temperature beginning to get closer to average, but still really cold. Uh, of course, that's a very cold temperature. Certainly no sign of any particular warming of strategy, and certainly no sign of a sudden stratospheric warming over North Pole. If we have that, we see the black line going up to around there within uh, a few days, but there's absolutely no sign of that uh, whatsoever. If you go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, which of course is closer to the troposphere, there things are still really cold. Uh, so we're under minus 80, around minus 85 uh, there, when we should by late January be around minus 68 something like that so uh, we are very very cold at, uh, at uh, 30 hpa closer to the troposphere and no sign of any particular warming there uh, at all you know we just continue to be really really cold in that part of the stratosphere so this is how the latest uh, GFS, the 6Z, is currently uh, predicting things to develop with temperatures at 10 HPA. These are the cold temperatures that have got over North Pole, somewhere around minus 70, something like that. Uh, so as we go through the next few days, we keep those blue colours going over the North Pole, particularly pushing over to the uh, to the Greenland and, and Atlantic side of the Pole. Uh, gradually, you know, we try and lift temperature uh, towards the Pacific side and towards eastern Siberia, but that's been kept well and truly at bay by these blue colours. So certainly over the next week or so, those cold temperatures will continue at uh, 10 HPA. As we go into the extended range, again, the temperature hovers around minus 68, something like that, into the beginning of February. Let's see how that compares to, like, average. Remember, this is 10 HPA, not 30 HPA. So minus 68 um, in the beginning of February, which is just is probably around... Uh, it's actually, uh, you know, it's actually... Um, but probably a little bit uh, below average, but not excessively so. So the black line by the beginning of February will be around there, just a little bit under uh, the grey line, uh, I would have thought. But um, but yeah, you know, we keep it pretty cold going right the way through to, uh, to that period or so. And then extending on, uh, we do see that those blue colours begin to get a little bit more stretched and weaker. And again, no particular warming of the stratosphere except over Siberia, but if that's what well shot uh, the southern stratospheric one. But over time, it does look as though the blue colours get a little bit more raggedy, doesn't it? You see what I mean? But it's not a warming of the stratosphere, just gradually weakening and, and just beginning to, to become... Uh, less enclosed, I suppose. So it's a little bit strange why that happened when we haven't got any particular notable warming of the stratosphere going on. I suppose it's just climatology, you know, the, the temperature is beginning 
to be that closer to average due to the um, due to the, the change of the year and whatnot. But but yeah, it looks like it's, there's nothing really happening into the beginning of February stratosphere wise in terms of the significant warming of the stratosphere anyway. So the wait for a sudden stratospheric warming goes on. I am beginning to worry now whether we're not going to have a sudden stratospheric warming this winter. Some winters don't have it. Um, and it is getting very late on. I wasn't expecting that we would get a certain traffic warning, given the situation with the ECQBO and uh, and so on. But uh, again, this winter is proving to be very, very strange. It's a very strange winter that is not at all uh, complying with what we expected it to do, which the weather, you know, can do that. You know, sometimes the weather will throw in a complete curveball and uh, and take everybody by surprise when we look at the things like the QBO and, and the PDO, the AMO, all of these uh, things, uh, you know, uh, we're just looking for the most likely scenario to evolve from those things. Sometimes the weather will always do its own thing. And uh, this is one of those years where the weather really is just just doing its own thing. And I am beginning to wonder whether we're not going to get some traffic warming now, I have to say. Um, so, you know, uh, we'll see, though. Uh, it might happen in March. I mean, the further on you get towards the spring, the more likely it is that you'll get a warming strategy. But, of course, if any strategy warming in March is going to affect the spring, it won't affect winter. So we'll just have to wait and see. But this is proving to be a really, really... Uh, you know, dregs of winter, I have to say. This is one of the worst winters that I can remember, synoptically. Just week after week after week, sat under high pressure, and the high pressure not going anywhere, not doing anything. Uh, it's just been, it's just been a nightmare. This winter's been an absolute nightmare, I have to say. And, uh, what impacts that has, you know, on whether we do any more long range, uh, we, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what everybody wants, I suppose. I mean... Um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I have more to say about that when we get into the end of the season, uh, of course. But, um, but yeah, it's been a complete and utter nightmare, this uh, supposed winter. Right, so uh, let's have a look at central in temperature. So CT is currently standing still at 5 degrees, which is 1.4 degree uh, above average. That's provisional to the 22nd of uh, January. In reality, that's probably in the fours now, I would say. That's probably gone into the fours once we add in a downwards uh, correction. Uh, so we'll see where that lands up at the end of the month, of course. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. So let's, let's have a look, quick look at these, uh, shall we? This is for London. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off above average at the moment with those upper air temperatures. And generally with six set set staying, you know, rather above average or near to normal anyway, uh, right way through to the first week of February. If we compare this to the midnight run, which I did just show you a second ago, so if the midnight GFS run uh, was clearly indicating um, like a uh, chance of a cold snap through the first week of February. We've got some of the white line actually going above average. Look how that shifted, though, for the 6 Z set. So the ensembles are swinging, uh, you know, even the ensemble sets are swinging. And any time we get any cold weather appearing within the extended range within the GFS or its ensembles, the lid is always very firmly closed shut on that. Uh, possibility, <laughs> you know, um, and this is one of those uh, situations where that's happened again from the midnight run to the six set set. You can clearly see, but you can clearly see, but um, there has been a shift from the midnight set to the GFS set uh, to the midnight. Uh, from, uh, let's do that again. You can clearly see there has been a shift from the midnight set to the six set set. Uh, you know, towards mild. Um, also looks rather zonal as well. So uh, uh, yeah, we've got some uh, warmer and cooler and warmer. And cooler and warmer sectors alternating with one another, so it does look as though there's going to be a bit of zonality as we go into the end of January. Um, also, there are a few cold snaps appearing that might be there, but I, I think really the GFS is uh, um, obviously continuing to waver on the possibility of anything particularly cold. Precipitation wise, there are loads of dry weather during the end of January, then maybe a bit more unsettled uh, into early February. That's probably getting pushed back though uh, with time. Two meter temperatures. Are looking like this, so starting off quite cool. Uh, for London at the moment, then it goes milder. Um, right at the end of January, start of February, and no sign of any particular cold snap. Uh, you know, when we get into the uh, later on in the first week of February, uh, which we did see on the midnight set. So the midnight set has this cool start, then it goes milder, and then it did actually cool things down a little bit for the first week of February. But that's gone, uh, that trend uh, later on is gone on the six Z uh, set. 
Temperature anomaly, so the 23rd of January to the 31st are above average from many central north parts of the country, but a little bit below average down in the far south of the country. And precipitation anomalies from the 23rd of January to the 31st are drier than normal in most areas. The latest wind flow map from urbanoldschool.net shows that we are drawing in southwest winds from off the Atlantic just to our north and west as high pressure begins to slip a little bit further eastwards. The uh, chart data looking like this. This is how the uh, UK Met Midnight Run is looking. Again, high pressure is to our south as we go into Wednesday and pulls out to our west slightly on Thursday. Could bring a band of rain south east. I expect that will fizzle out by the time it gets into the south. But we get to a little bit of a cooler northerly on Friday. It's very, very transient, though, back into much milder westerlies again by Saturday. And uh, then a little bit of a transient northerly again as we get through to Sunday, the 30th of January. That could be, uh, could be enough of the normally to bring some wintry showers to the far north of Scotland. Icon looks like that. So, uh, again, we've got plenty of high pressure on Wednesday. A little bit more unsettled through Thursday to Friday. It goes rather wet and windy, actually, uh, by Saturday with heavy rain in the north and, you know, quite mild down in the south. And then we're into a cooler north northwesterly as we get through to midnight on Sunday with low pressure over the over Norway. And uh, again, we're putting in that rather cold and showery northwesterly to slight north. It might be enough to bring some wind showers into north of Scotland, but it will only be very transitory before winds go back into the west again. GFS Midnight Run, uh, looks like that. Once more, high pressure will be dominating the scene uh, on Wednesday. Uh, try to get a little bit more unsettled from Thursday and Friday. I suspect any rain in the south will be really light and patchy. And back comes high pressure again into the uh, weekend with winds raining from the west. A little bit of a cooler northwesty, perhaps, by the last day of January. But overall, we keep weather driving in from west. It remains pretty mild. Into the more extended rain zones, properly wet and windy, with deep low pressure in the nor north sea. And uh, slightly cold and northerly to northwesterly uh, as well. A little bit of a cold snap there. Uh, very extended rain, so it's a long way up. But there is a little bit of a cold snap there through uh, the 5th, 6th of February with winds in from the north. They're back into quite wet and windy weather again uh, when we get through to the 8th of Febru February, which is as far as we go with the GFS uh, today. Looking pretty wet and a windy then. GFS 6Z uh, looking like this. So once more, we have the high pressure sort of rooted to the country on Wednesday. Uh, mainly dry under the ridge as we get through Friday. And Saturday dries in the south a little bit more and settled further north and west. And then heading up towards day 10, we pull in this rather cooler and more showering northwesterly wind by day 10, which is 2nd of February. The high pressure is ridging back in from off the Atlantic. So just as we think we're going to get rid of the high pressure... Uh, back it comes again. Um, so, again, that's a shift. You know, I expect that's probably... I haven't gone through your samples yet, but I expect that would be the shift from the uh, from the midnight to 6 said with much more of an anticyclonic influence still going on just to our west and southwest. We keep that ridge going all the way through the first week of February. Eventually, the uh, 6 said GFS tries to get high pressure up to Scandinavia and is... By the very end, 8th of February, is having a really good go of building up a Scandinavian high. Um, but, of course, that's over two weeks away, and it's, it's, it's very, very, very unlikely to verify. GM, if you enjoyed the video, then please just smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment there so about this at all of our videos. Thank you so much. GM, again, with lots of high-pressure domination going on. In the middle part of the week, a little bit cooler and more unsettled Thursday through to Friday with winds turning into the north. Then back comes a high pressure from off the Atlantic reaching back in uh, once more. A little bit cooler again and more unsettled around the 31st of January. Maybe enough some wintry showers in the north. But overall, up to day 10, we keep wind coming in from a westerly direction. And then we've got the ECM, which looks like this. So, uh, you know, we keep lots of anticyclonic influences, particularly to the south. We'll be a little bit more unsettled up to the north. And no particular cool snap, at least until day 10, which is the 2nd of February. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. And there's not much happening whatsoever, what rain there is. Mostly in the north. A few winter showers there around the last day of January. Some snow showers uh, across Scotland. Maybe won't amount to two much. It could be a little bit of winteriness for the last day of January. But overall, it remains mild with winds off the Atlantic up to day 10. And these are the options that are on the table. Then the ECM on summer today for day 10, which will get 
Mr. Stubby, 2nd of February from the Icelandic Met Office. 13 members of the ECL ensembles have low pressure to the north, and a high pressure will be to the south, and winds will be coming in from a westerly direction. So most of drive from the south a little bit more unsettled in the north, generally quite mild. 12 with low pressure again to the north, high pressure to the south, winds will be flat and westerly. 10, we'll have high pressure ridging over France and uh, low pressure to the north. That's going to be drier and potentially very mild, maybe even rather spring-like. And then we've got 8 again with high pressure just to our south-southwest, low pressure just to our north-northwest and in come those westerly winds. And then we've got 8 again. High pressure just to our west, low pressure just to our east. That could be a little bit cooler when you swim in the northwest. But you see, fundamentally, everything is uh, driving in from off the Atlantic with that. And then in two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. We'll get to the 7th of February. 15 members of the east. Our summers have low pressure to our east. And they could be pulling in something a little bit colder from the north. Probably only briefly, but that's a little bit colder from the north there. 13, flat and westerly, perhaps Bangkok. High pressure south, low pressure to the north, winds in from uh, the west. We've got 11 with high pressure just about over the country. That could be mainly dry. We've got 8 with, again, low pressure to our north, high pressure over the country. That could be mainly dry and perhaps a little bit more frostier. And then 14, something similar to the GFS 6 there, trying to build up some higher pressure towards Scandinavia and having a go, anyway, at getting the wind into more of an easterly direction. Obviously, that would be the kindest option, but there's only four doing that. So the idea is, I think, either it's going to be mild and unsettled or mild and dry. There is a possibility of a very brief cold snap there uh, from the northwest or the north, but it would be relatively transitory. Finally, the uh, CFS V2 series so of 500 millibar heights break down to wheat peers. The first wheat peer takes from 23rd to 29th of January. The coming week will have above average heights, high pressure over and slightly to the western country. Should be mainly dry uh, with that. Then we've got uh, wheat 2 be the 30th of January to the 5th of February with low pressure again to our east and northeast. High pressure sort of pulls out to our west a little bit and it turns the wind into more of a west or maybe slightly northwesterly direction. Uh, we've got week three, which will be the 6th through to 12th of February, still looking unsettled, low pressure to the north, high pressure pulled out to the west, winds will again be coming from something of a west or northwesterly type direction, and then it goes on into week four, which will be the 13th to the 19th of February, with low pressure again to the north, high pressure again to the south, and winds coming in from a westerly direction, all a sort of Atlantic driven, everything driving in from the Atlantic at least until the third week of February. And we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, then please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz Weather Vids and uh, drop a comment. And let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. Uh, right, okay, so we'll be back later on with Ensembles Watch App. Will be a video upload rather than a live stream. So no Sunday night live stream. Hopefully we're back in business with lives uh, on Friday and also uh, next Sunday. Uh, but for tonight, Ensembles Watch will be um, just a video. Tomorrow we'll have the 6 a.m. Uh, forecast and uh, probably a 10 to 14, well, definitely a 10 to 14 day as well. So uh, keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.